Hey, I'm here in Toronto at the apartment of AVFM's Jim Bisett. Uh, now, a little while ago, right after Rain came out saying that rape culture... Damn it. Hey, I'm here in Toronto at the apartment of AVFM's Jim Bisett. Now, a little while ago, uh, right after Rain uh, came out saying that rape culture is a myth, in fact, uh, there was a forum held in Edmonton about rape culture and how it's totally real and totally not made up. Uh, this forum had some prominent Edmontonians in it, like Dr. Lise Gattel, who is the Professor and Vice Dean of Arts at the University of Alberta. Uh, for those of you who don't know, she's also the one who made Men's Rights Edmonton famous. Thank you, Dr. Gattel. Uh, there's also Staff Sergeant Shauna Grimes of the Edmonton Police Service and Ryan Jesperson, host of Breakfast Television, a local morning news show with City TV. Uh, this forum is two hours of mind-numbing brain torture. Uh, these people sit around and push a feminist agenda. It's, it's actually on the City of Edmonton YouTube channel, and it's called Taking Action, hashtag YEG Secret Exposed, which is a funny title for it because the video is unlisted, and you can only see the video if you've got a link to it. Like, typically, when you want to blow the lid off of something, you don't hide your expose, right? Anyway, I will be linking to it in the low bar. Uh, now, why would you watch it after I just told you that it was two hours of mind-numbing brain torture? Well, because there's a ton of stuff to lampoon in there, as my close, personal friend, Dr. Randomer Cam, is about to demonstrate. Yeah. Um, I, there's this lovely, amazing stack of questions. Hi, guys. Mick sent me. I have a question. How many porcupines can you fit inside it? I'm going to usurp. Oh, okay then. I like you. You're feisty. You usurp away. And ask one question that I'm really interested in um, for the last question, Nikki. Um, Why are they laughing? Is Nikki like a trigger word? You are getting quite handsy all of a sudden. Which kind of I think speaks to speaks to this issue in Edmonton. Um, the "Don't be that guy" uh, posters. Um, of course, the visual language of that has been uh, taken uh, and and used for this completely other campaign um, to suggest that. Um, you know, rape is mostly a problem of, of women regretting what they did the next morning, which is obviously... Which is obviously not what those posters said. Those posters said a variety of things. The gist of one of those things being that women regretting what they did the next morning is not rape. So don't be that girl. What you've said there is essentially the exact opposite of the truth, which would be... False. That's right. Now, jazz it up a bit. Um, for, that's not the... that overwhelmingly false. That's not really jazz, that's like indie pop at best, but carry on. Um, that's a very, very small amount. Dude, inside voice for that stuff? Amount of what happens. Um, but does that... Stop squirming, man! <laughs> if I had a penny. Um, part of the conversation in Edmonton about rape culture, does that tempt you to uh, want to rip all the posters down. Ah, <laughs> that explains the squirming and the handsiness and the usurping and the lying. Is it <laughs> you're wrestling with your cotton candy wisp of a conscience to try and get to the item on your agenda that your anti-conscience told you not to miss. Draconian censorship! <laughs> I just had one uh, urgent thing to say. I... Uh, uh, you may have heard somebody call us out in our bullshit. Um, does that make you want to burn books? And set them all on fire? <laughs> <laughs> called it. Fucking called it. <laughs> and he's not being hyperbolic, by the way. Posters have indeed been torn down. Or to get more deeply engaged in the conversation. <laughs> oh, so that was your actual question. <laughs> not, so what do you think? Not... What's your opinion on this element of rape culture I just made up? Your actual question was, do you think we should be burning information like stir-crazy medieval peasant mobs? Or should we act like decent, honest people with a rational leg to stand on? Uh, Take your time. Do. Would you like to speak this too? Um, well, we were all involved in, in the campaign, but... Um, you know, yeah, I, 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 you know. Mm. <laughs> Holy shit, they really do that. <laughs> I thought it was just a characterization or something. 
Fuck me. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> My view of those posters is that they've stolen our intellectual property and they violated our uh, use agreements. Wowzers, really? <laughs> he just described the poster that blames rape on one gender, one gender only, and one gender entirely. So this particular form of victim blaming is your intellectual property. <laughs> that might be the closest I'll ever get to hearing a feminist admit to a mistake. <laughs> but now's a good time to remind you that in fact the Don't Be That Girl posters blamed false rape accusation on one gender, one gender, and one gender only and entirely. <clears throat> so as to satirize your dead serious poster campaign to blame rape on one gender, one gender only, and one gender entirely. To summarize, you embarked on a shamelessly bigoted large-scale poster campaign. Minzer at Edmonton responded with a small-scale poster campaign. Gender flipping yours to highlight how bigoted it is. So what would you say your advice is? So, feel free to rip them down. You know, when he asked medieval peasant mob or decent people, <laughs> I thought it was a silly question. <laughs> I thought it was moot. <laughs> and it's because I thought the answer was decent, honest people. <laughs> Look, I won't ask much else of you, feminists, but do me a favor. If the conversation you want to have is, do we burn the books? Fuck yes, let's burn all the books. <laughs> Just have that conversation. <laughs> If you want to act like puritanical demagogues and ergot adult witch smellers publicly demanding the destruction of the written word, just do it. Don't sit there squirming and umming your way through this like your harmless little sweet cabbage patch people. You are the equivalent of those Bronze Age, Bronze Age sand maniacs at the foot of Mount Sinai beheading each other for making craven images. You're actually historically important. At least give it some welly, will you? You're going to be in the annals of history's greatest barbarians, and you're really going to fuck up the Hall of Fame if you insist on being so teeth-grindingly bereft of any fucking honesty or charisma. It's going to be Genghis Khan, Ivan the Terrible, Vlad the Impaler, and then an, ov then an underwhelmingly joyless bunch of prancing tosspots. Um, but I, I really don't want to end on, on a negative note. <laughs> I'm afraid you have no choice. Hist history will either remember you as the insightly infaction in the quest of compassion and wisdom that you in fact are, or history will remember nothing. Because you carried on destroying society, sucking the world dry of its resources, and ending this galaxy's only shot at intelligent life. Or you actually bring about an Orwellian nightmare of some description. <laughs> Not sure what my money's on. I think that, you know, they're, they're, at this moment, I think that we are facing a backlash. Yes, people are calling you out on your shit. People are finally calling you out on your shit because your shit is biblically fucking bigoted. But I, I look at this panel and the conversation we've created tonight and there's so much momentum. Yep, but none of it upward. And so much awareness raising. And none of it self and I think that that's what we really need to focus on because th this, you know, this little backlash that we're experiencing, I think is an indication that... We're deserving of backlash? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are making some real change. Backlash only happens when you make real change, and I think we are, so thank you for organizing the panel. Yes, people call you out on your biblically fucking bigoted bullshit because you are doing it far too much and far too often, and getting away with it. You are changing the world into a soulless, spineless, hateful puddle of a world, and you're getting away with it. Or are you? Thanks for listening, folks. Be a darling and email this video to as many people as you wish. Over to you, Nick. I think. Thanks, Mike. Now, he didn't even get to the part where they all sit around and say that I've never shown my face. Uh, I'll be linking to that specific part in the video in the low bar as well, and uh, if they try to take that down, just contact me. Uh, we already have it downloaded, so this will never go away.
Uh, also, it was uploaded with a standard YouTube license. So making another YouTube video with content from that video won't be stealing anyone's intellectual property, uh, just in case uh, Lee's Cattell catches wind of it. Uh, now, I, I just let this video sit for so long because I didn't know how to handle it when it came out. Uh, because there's a police officer on that panel, and I don't want to be at odds uh, with the cops at all. Uh, I actually called the staff sergeant after watching the video, and we had a good talk. Uh, she seems cool, so if anyone like Bane666 or Razorblade Candy, uh, Sparky Fister, or Yes I Am James, or Thunderfoot, or anyone else who wants to take apart feminist bullshit on YouTube wants to tear apart this video, wink wink, uh, please go easy on the cop because she's cool. Um, I really want people to go after Jesperson, actually, because when you see the video, you'll, you'll know why. That prick has been at both of the Walk a Mile events I've attended while I was wearing my Men's Rights Edmonton sandwich board, and he made direct eye contact with me both times, and he goes on this panel and says I don't show my face. What a fucking prick. Anyway, this is Nick Redding from Men's Rights Edmonton.